News 46 is brought to you by Golden Casino Group, where you'll always find great fun, good food, and fantastic entertainment, all at Gold Town, Lakeside, and the Pahrump Nugget. News is also brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Call 727-9900 today for your free consultation. If you need a lawyer, you need Nelson. Tonight on News 46, an inmate dies of self-inflicted wounds. And it's up, up, and away for the Pahrump Valley Model Aviators. News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46 with Deanna O'Donnell. And Unette Gentry. News 46. Local coverage you can count on. A Nye County inmate reportedly takes his own life. It's August 17th. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. And I'm Unette Gentry. According to police, an inmate in the Nye County Detention Center has died in what is believed to be self-inflicted injuries. A press release from Nye County says that on Thursday, August 10th, the Nye County Sheriff's Office detention staff was summoned to a cell for a report of an inmate who was bleeding. Deputies discovered inmate Robert Lynn bleeding from what appeared to be self-inflicted injuries. Nye County deputies and medical staff rendered emergency aid until medics arrived. Lynn was transported to Des Desert View Hospital. The patient was reportedly alert, talking, and ambulatory at the time of transport. The press release says that Lynn was stabilized and then airlifted by Mercier to UMC Trauma Center in Las Vegas for more advanced care. Later that day, Lynn was pronounced deceased by doctors at University Medical Center. The Clark County Coroner's Office, with the assistance of Nye County detectives, is conducting the death investigation. Robert Lynn was in custody on charges of escape from an incident on March 23rd of this year during which he escaped from the Nye County Sheriff's Office Detention Center for a matter of minutes before being apprehended. Today's terror attack in Barcelona has resulted in the deaths of at least 10 people and injured more than 100 after a van rammed through crowds in the heart of the city. The driver abandoned the van and escaped from the area. Two suspects were arrested. ISIS has taken responsibility for the attack. A senior a police official said that the van attack is connected to a gas explosion inside a house in the town of Alcanar Wednesday in which one person was killed and seven others were injured. Valley Electric Association has been providing funding for the operation and maintenance of the fountain at Calvada Boulevard and Highway 160 for some time. Now they might have to fork out a little more money for a new design after submitting plans to have more efficient modern fountain put in place as the broken one hasn't worked since a vehicle crashed into it last year. We were here once before before you uh, to present the ideas for Moving forward with rehabbing the existing fountain, it has not been operating for about a year now, maybe a little over. Um, it costs a little over $7,400 annually to operate that and maintain it right now. It's going to be a little over $16,000 to fix it, and it's returning it to its current state. It's inefficient. There are some hazards with it, some serious hazards that do need to be immediately addressed. So um, what you see, what was presented to you in the backup is conceptual ideas um, we would like to make the fountain safe for our workers when they need to go out and maintain it for the public we want it to be safe um, we want it to be efficient we want to be good stewards of the resources we have both the electricity and the water so we want to make it more efficient in terms of power usage and water use and reduce um, evaporation and water loss um, and of course safety okay so um, I think everything else is pretty much in your backup. So, Anything else I can answer? Yeah, for you? so that we're all clear. You, uh, VEA has been paying to maintain and operate that. That is and correct. And VEA is prepared to take the whole cost of replacing and putting a new one in and maintain and operate that. The, the wind blows, and it, it blows when the waterfall is running. It blows water under the street. Colder months, it freezes. It can create a hazard. 
debris blows into the fountain, which clogs the filters. It's expensive to clean those, and it damages the pumps, which are large and run inefficiently and need to be upgraded. Um, it's there's dyes, there's soap, there's vandalism that also damage pumps and filters that create costs to repair, replace, and maintain. Um, the lighting of the fountain is aged, it's inefficient. Um, so all we're trying to propose is to address those issues, make it run more efficiently. It's either, either Valley Electric redo the design we have now or we take the $16,000 um, we buy all the things we need, such as the pumps, the lights, the materials, and have buildings and grounds do it as a project or get volunteers to do it. We have plenty of people in this town that have volunteered to do that because they want to see it get back on. But they're the, going to do the design and bring it back to rocks. us. Right. Okay. The, the, the problem what we got. isn't the rocks. They're going to be good forever if they're not fiberglass. If they're right. fiberglass, they may come apart. Here we go. So. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, thank you. Bring us a good design. Thank you so much, and thank you for being willing to pay for all this. Thank you, Commissioners. And I'm sure there's people who miss PJ's Market and the, the cotton mill, too. I miss the building that was here, but <laughs> life moves on. And stay tuned to KPVM. We'll have even more local news for you coming up after this break. <laughs>